Hello, I'm Stacy. Welcome to my channel. I'm coming to you from Metro Detroit, Michigan, where I live with my husband, Doug, our daughter, Eliza, and our pug, Esther. It is January 19th, 2021, and I am going to switch things up a little bit this year with the format. And right now, <laughs> we are going to talk about a project that has taken over my making life, and that is my temperature blanket. I don't know if you heard me right, but I'm making a temperature blanket and it's not some, well, I planned on doing it about two and a half years ago, but I was just not up for it. And part of the reason was I was just not in a great place. But also part of the reason is when I think of temperature blankets, I think of very primary rainbow colors. And that's, if you know me, that's really not my jam. I like variations and hues of the rainbow, but not bright primary rainbow colors. I like really muted, sometimes pastel, sometimes more like fall, all autumnal colors. Uh, it really just kind of depends on my mood. It depends on what I'm going for and that kind of dictates where I go with the shade of a color. But again, primary colors, not my thing. Neon colors, not my thing. And I was really at a loss because when I thought of temperature blankets, I really thought of you know, buying yarn at Michael's and getting something like loops and threads, which I actually really love. That's what I started knitting with. And I think it's amazing yarn and getting an array of colors and creating a temperature chart and then going. But like I said, I kind of pumped the brakes, slowed my roll, and I'm really glad I did because last year in 2020, I discovered Tony. And Tony is of TL Yarn Crafts, right? Yes, TL Yarn Crafts. I'm going to link her channel below. I highly recommend you follow her channel. You check out her videos on temperature blankets. You check out her Instagram feed, which is just breathtaking and full of so much crochet inspiration and if you've been around this channel for a long time you will know that I dabble in crochet with like a granny stripe blanket I don't do garments in crochet or anything like that I really just know how to single double and triple crochet and that's kind of the extent of my knowledge and we're going to rewind in my life and when I was about five or seven somewhere in that range we were at a gosh what were we doing we're at a family reunion I don't know we were in a motel and my grandma my dad's mom was an avid crocheter. She also kind of knit, but she was a crocheter at heart. She did beautiful afghans. She crocheted me ponchos. Um, yeah, she was just incredibly crafty and thrifty. And I think part of that comes from her living through the Great Depression and really learning how to create with the materials around her. But she really fell in love with the fiber crafts, specifically crochet. And I, like the majority of my life before she, um, she had dementia, she, you would just see her with a crochet hook and yarn in her hand almost all the time. So I really think that she instilled the love of crochet in me. And I also love crocheting because it makes me remember her. And I don't know, it's just, it's really cool to do this thing that my grandma did. And yeah, I don't know, it's just, it feels kind of full, full circle because she taught me how to chain. And I think she taught me how to start something and turn something, but that never clicked. I just remembered how to chain. And so <laughs> 
there's a picture of me with like my five-year-old mullet because my hair grew weird <laughs> And I just had like this mullet and I had like sweatpants and a floral, you know, late 90s shirt on. And I just have like yarn tucked under my arm and I'm just, I'm crocheting, just making a chain and the chain's really long. And I, I need to find that picture and put it on my Instagram because it is the funniest thing. And I don't know, whenever I touch a crochet hook and I... And making like a granny stripe that's what that reminds me of that's what it brings me back to and I really love it so I really wanted to when I was pregnant with Eliza so this was in 2018 um, once I kind of got out of the morning sickness phase which for me lasted the first two trimesters um, once I kind of got out of that so I was about like 30 weeks, which if you know my history, I wasn't pregnant for much longer. Um, I really thought about making a temperature blanket for the first year of Eliza's life. I thought it'd be really special. I thought it'd be something she could have forever. I don't know, I just thought it would be this really beautiful blanket that is quick to make because crochet is so fast. And that it would be a substantial size that she could take it with her throughout her life and remember me and my love for her and have this blanket that's a representation of her first year. So then <laughs> all of the drama happened with my pregnancy, enter postpartum depression, enter horrible months of just trying to get back into the groove and also having a newborn and my medical stuff on top of that and it was just like this whole mess that that kind of went out the window and I clung to my knitting for comfort but fast forward to 2021 the end of 2020 I decided that I was going to buckle down and start Eliza's temperature blanket. So traditionally a temperature blanket you start the first of the year and you go to December 31st and you choose the high or the low or the average temperature and you pick a color palette. Um, depending on where you live there might be more colors um, with a smaller range or just a vast range with a lot of colors. It just, it kind of depends. You know, somebody's, um, temperature fluctuation in, let's say, Michigan is going to be very different from somebody in California. So that's something. And also I will recommend you go to Tony's YouTube videos about the temperature blanket to really get an in-depth um, guide on how to create your scale and your color palette. So I decided originally I was going to go with Knit Picks Swish DK. This is my ideas book, by the way. I write everything down in here. And um, yeah, I, I don't know. I just... I kept looking at the Swish palette and it wasn't quite what I wanted. There were certain gaps in there that I just, I couldn't, I couldn't fill and make look right. I couldn't make it look like Eliza. And that's what I really wanted. I wanted a blanket that really suited her. And I mean, her color preferences are going to change. But for me right now, she's always kind of a yellow a yellow um a yellow like dusty pink and green kind of girl like that's that's kind of what I peg her as and so this is my basket of yarn so let's go through the temperature ranges and the color that I chose for that range so 90 degrees and above is brick oh I should say that because I couldn't quite figure out my palette in Swish and I looked a few other places but I wanted to go with wool and not acrylic just because that's what I enjoy using um 
but I think acrylic, this would be a really great place for an acrylic yarn. Um, cause I also looked at like Nitpicks Brava. Um, I looked at Loops and Threads. I looked at Vanna's Choice and just nothing really sang to me. So I decided to dye my own yarn, which is Stress Knits Yarn, if you are new. And I used my DK base and picked colors that I thought went together really well and also felt like Eliza. So 90 degrees and above is Brick, which is just this beautiful tonal red. And then 80 to 90 degrees or 80 to 89 degrees is glow which is a coppery pink is kind of how I phrase it and then 70 to 79 degrees is sunflower it's a nice golden yellow which is what I'm actually working on right now and then what comes next 60 to 69 is eucalyptus which is just like this greenish kind of a, it's a cool green gray color I just I really love it it reminds me of um, silver dollar eucalyptus which is why it's called that it's eucalyptus and then 50 to 59 is mountain mama a nice deep olive foresty green kind of color 40 to 49 is pillow mint Thirty to 39 is perfectly adequate a, just a good run-of-the-mill midline gray and then 20 to 29 is Betty. Not Betty. It's not Betty anymore. It's Button Up. Oh, Stacy. I renamed it Button Up. It was originally called Betty, but renamed it Button Up because it's the same color as my favorite Button Up shirt that I wear all the time. It's just a nice little blue color. And then the 10 to 19 degrees is dried lavender and 10 degrees and below is palm lines just a barely there pink and then I am starting the blanket ending the blanket and separating the months with Eloise because honestly if I could pick a color to represent Eliza it would be or like a group of colors it would be these three this feels very Eliza and then maybe adding a green to it but these three that just, it screams her to me so that is my color palette I have them all in here I don't know if you'd see that <laughs> so I have them all in there and then what I did, because I am doing kind of a retroactive temp blanket, I already have written down all of the temperatures from June 14th, 2018 to June 14th, 2019. Because this is going from her first day on earth to her first birthday. So... <laughs> I recorded the afternoon high because the website I'll, I used, which I'll link below in case you want to do a retroactive blanket, like I've thought about doing one for my first year of marriage, um, the first year of life, um, maybe the year, like your last year of college, or maybe your kid's senior year, like those kinds of things, like big, big things, right? that's kind of where my brain is um but you could do it literally anytime and yeah I don't know I'm just I'm really excited about this so I will link the website that I put it on and it had like the low 
the morning high, the afternoon high, the evening high, something like that. It has like a range, but I picked the noon high. So like the afternoon high, that's what I went with. It was the highest um, point of every day and wrote every single one down. So I've already finished the month of June, but I, it's the, I start on the 14th. So, um, I did like half of a month and then I'm also almost halfway through July and I'm getting really excited to get into these cooler months because the first three months are mostly seventies, eighties, and nineties. And I actually have a 60 degree day coming up within at the end of July, which is just such a Michigan Midwest thing to happen. Um, so I'm excited to have that like little blip of eucalyptus in there. But yeah, once we get into September, the blanket is really going to start shifting to the cooler month colors or the cooler temperature colors. I'm drinking iced coffee in case you're wondering. So let's actually show you the blanket <laughs> because I made a lot of work on it. So actually, first things first, the crochet hook I'm using is a Clover Amore. It is a seven hook, a 4.5 millimeter. It's blue. I was turned on to these by Jacqueline Salem of the Jacqueline Salem YouTube channel and I love them. So highly recommend these. I also really love Knitter's Pride, <clears throat> excuse me, Knitter's Pride crochet hooks. These are my two favorites, but right now the way that I'm crocheting and the amount that I'm crocheting, this ergonomic handle is really coming in handy. So I really, really recommend the Clover Amore. I will also link those below. So this blanket, like I said, I'm starting with Eloise. And then you'll see another blip of Eloise here, which is where July starts. But this, oops, this is where I'm at. As you can see, there's a lot of 70 degree days here at the um, end of June. I just I really love it this feels like an Eliza blanket I so the rule for granny stripe is an uh, what is it a a multiple of three plus one I think so I, I did 210 I forgot to write it down I think I did 210 plus one. So 211. And it's like, it's the perfect size. So I laid it over mine and Doug's lap and we can both fit under it really comfortably. And so I really think this is going to be a really good size for her to have maybe on her bed if she likes it enough, but I'm not going to force that at all. But maybe when she's older, Maybe when she goes to college or moves out, whatever she ends up doing, maybe this will follow her and live on her couch or something like that. That's kind of my dream, but I'm not going to force it. But I just really love it. It feels, it feels like her and I'm so happy that it does. Um, yeah, I just, I really, I'm so happy with how this is coming out. I can't wait to share this with you as it grows and talk to you about what I've learned. I've already learned so much. So I have 10 colors that I'm using. I'm using increments of 10 degrees or nine degrees. And um, I would already make that <laughs> a little smaller. So maybe five or six degree increments just because in the Midwest, we do have a lot of fluctuating temperatures and that will be very evident in the later months. But in the summer, we kind of hover around the same few temperatures the entire summer. There are a few really hot days. There are a few 
like cooler days, but most of our temperatures are in the 70s and 80s. Like, so there's this big nine day stretch of 70 degree weather. And as you can see at the bottom here, lots of 80 degree days, which again is perfectly fine. I'm really happy with how this is going. I'm not ripping this back. That would be torture. Um, but I don't know, I just really enjoy it. <laughs> oh, it makes me so happy. And I'm really happy that I started with Eloise. I think it's a really nice contrast and it looks good with every color. So yes, that is Eliza's temperature blanket. And I'm really excited about it. Are you making a temperature blanket? Are you doing um, the traditional, like doing it for the year of 2021? Are you doing a retroactive blanket? Are you planning a temperature blanket now? Please let me know. Let me know what kind of color palette you're using. I'm very curious to find out because I am obsessed with this project and I, <laughs> I work on it almost every night. So with that, thank you so much for joining in. If you are interested in supporting the channel, please consider becoming a patron. These are the people who get the content first before it comes out to all of you, and they make it possible for me to take the time to do this. And I just, I really appreciate every single one of you who supports me over there. And even if that's not a possibility, thank you so much for watching and engaging with me. Um, it's such a pleasure and a privilege to share my making with you and to have this community that we have over here at Stress Knits. So thank you so much. I hope you are having a good start to your year and I will see you soon. Bye.